Hey guys, welcome to Anel Grande. Thanks for subscribing and joining this channel. Uh, I got a quick video here to kind of uh, show. So this is partially built up my Trek Superfly. Um, in the process of building it up, one of the things that I was waiting for is that my current wheel set doesn't use through axles. It's uh, standard QR so what I have to do is I have to replace Trek calls these uh, closed convert through axle dropouts and there's the, the through axle through axle is really awesome if you have wheels set up for it uh, some actually hubs and wheels can be converted um, by just uh, swapping out the spacers or um, like the sockets the ends However, mine is a standard Shimano old school um, 135 overlock nut, uh, and so it can't use that. But Trek did something really smart in that they made these dropouts removable so that you can put, uh, they call them uh, hardtail convert 135.5. And I did kind of open it up here um, so that you can use. Here's the screen pieces, the dropout itself, this little piece that gets stuck into the um, into the dropout, and then it comes with a new QR, or it doesn't come with. You have to purchase the. QR um, skewer. This is my old skewer here, and so let's put it in closed position, and you can see that it is considerably longer, so that uh, it will, you know, it'll accommodate both the wheel and the, the full dropout width because the screws or the nuts that hold it in place. Here's one. And then there's the other side. Make it considerably wider. So that's what I did also is I did already. Let me see if I can do it by hand. Um, I had pulled. There we go. The old ones off. Now, in order to replace these, actually in order to. Uh, install them correctly you're gonna need a 20 millimeter socket so that you can get the proper torque as you can see on here let me see if I can focus in on that it does say 200 inch pounds so this is the drive side and then let me get the other side and we'll look at the difference here because so what this does is it allows the 12 mil axle to just pull into place and you use the through axle to hold it Oops. what the new nut does is that it has a wider or a narrower space for the axle to go into and then it's also thicker um, so that's kind of hard to get a comparison here okay so this is the one for 135 135 by 9, I think they, they call it. Um, and then this is for the 142.12. So, you know, obviously this is flatter, um, and it has the hole for the through axle, whereas this has the hole for the QR. So this would be the non-drive side. Then you have, let's see if I can... This way. Right. 
Then you have the derailleur um, hanger side. Uh, again, it's more slotted and it allows a smaller smaller skewer to go through but then this side is hollowed out so this dealy bob that comes with the dropouts goes in there in a specific way because the nut for it is right here it has like a key so then this would gosh, this guy actually gets screwed in so that it, it can't pop out and that way it, you never lose at least that part of it because when you undo the QR you actually have to unthread it all the way and be able to pull the wheel out so that's that now interesting thing of note is that sure I have the, the right ones here so this is the new ones these are the old ones so on the non-drive side it has the standard 20 mil socket then what it looks like is that you would think you have to use like a flat or a wrench however you still need to torque it up to 200 inch pounds I believe but a standard 20 mil socket will still work with it so not too big of a deal there let's go ahead and get these started threading on now, normally for dropouts in the past, uh, derailleur hangers, I like to put some grease in here. Anytime you have objects coming in contact with each other, I usually like to put grease in. But the frame didn't come with any grease in there, and so I'm a little nervous about putting grease on something that the factory wouldn't want to put grease on. So I'm still debating. I may dab a little bit of grease in there um, I don't like a lot of noise so that to me that's a potential area for creaking and cracking however with it cinched down to 200 inch pounds maybe that's a good thing because any dirt and dust would become or any grease on there would become a magnet for dirt and dust and that can also cause um, creaking but again I just wanted to show you the difference here in the dropouts so here we have the 135 5 or 135 by 9 and this is the uh, non-drive side versus the 142 12 Oops. So you can kind of see the difference there on that one. And then we'll go ahead and look at the drive side. So I oh, can't see it, but that's the drive side. Okay, thanks a lot for tuning in again. This is the Anello Grande video blog and channel. Uh, please go ahead and subscribe if you like this video. Um, again, I'm just about finishing building up my Superfly. Again, this was a replacement frame for my Trek Paragon 2011 aluminum hardtail that they upgraded to carbon, um, which then needed uh, new dropouts uh, in order to get my old uh, QR wheels working. But this does open up the doors for when I do replace wheels to be able to use through axles, at least on the rear. Um, give a thumbs up and subscribe, and I will talk to you guys later. Aloha.